Um, ah, we're here to tell you that it's all about the people. Right, I'm just going to give it 20 seconds. All right. So, I'm standing here to tell you that uh, you should forget about the web for, for a minute. So, uh, I, I used to be a guy who told people about how to connect ideas and, and get the ideas to spread themselves. Um, But now I'm here to tell you how these ideas should spread without the web. What we take from the web, however, what we, what we want to take from the web is a lot of knowledge. So what we learned from our experience with using the web, the internet, be it in an app form or in your browsers, is um, well, first of all, there are people like you. There are people who like turtles, and um, you can actually see them elsewhere, and you realize, okay, I'm not alone in this. And the other thing you may have come to uh, learn is the concept of serendipity. Even though you may not know the word, the concept should be quite familiar when you browse around and you find something that you didn't even know you were looking for. So that's serendipity. There is actually this, this story, so, so the origin of the word goes back to a Persian story about three princes and their wise uh, father who um, gave them a great education that wanted to, to test if they were fit to be kings themselves. And it turned out they were because um, through happenstance, fortuitous happenstance, they um, always found things that, that were helping them even though they weren't questing to find them. And, and that may be something you have experienced yourselves uh, just by browsing the web, I think. And what we want to do is, is take this knowledge and apply it to our daily lives. Now, I remember Sasha Lobo told us uh, of a barren wasteland of what we need to do. And I'm not gonna lie, so if we move out into the wild and in the desert, uh, there will be a hardship. But if you move forward, and if you are prepared and wait for Lady Luck to come to you, then she will. The thing is, Waiting alone isn't enough. You need to know how to, to un understand where she may appear and then be ready for when she does. And uh, unlike Sasha Lobo said, actually it isn't a problem to have money because Lady Luck oftentimes has money with her. So what you did in browsing the web basically was you prepared yourself. You were training for this moment out in the wild where um, over time, uh, you've been equipped with the skills to uh, grab the bull by the horns. And just like the princess in the original story, you are able to recognize uh, the right circumstances. And that means that it's not always a barren wasteland going out there, but when you move into the wild, uh, there may actually uh, be quite nice sceneries. The thing is, very many people live out there in the wild and they don't live on the web, which is why it's so important for us to go out there. So, I believe my life is very alien to the friends I grew up with in kindergarten. They, they really don't understand um, what I'm doing to make a living. Heck. I don't think my tax accountant understands what I'm doing to make a living. <laughs> so that's why it's all the more important that you actually move away from, from this, this alien space into the wild where, you know, nice people actually live. Do this and Lady Luck will reward you. I have with me today if the slides ever move forward. Uh, 
Ah. So I have with me today two people who can tell you a lot more about why it makes sense to believe. Why, even though your idea may be unfinished, you're already in the right place to overcome the gatekeepers. And wherever you may be, be prepared for luck to find you. And these two people build networks of their own outside of just, you know, the networking thing we call the internet. And uh, they're called Uwe Lübermann, Uwe Lübermann, entschuldigung, <laughs> and uh, Beatrice Möller. And uh, they are here to tell you uh, what it takes to believe and, and why it makes sense to do so, and also what steps you actually need to take to succeed in uh, relying on your trust. So uh, to start us off, here is Beatrice Müller, and uh, she's going to tell you all about um, how to succeed in funding a film. She's a professional filmmaker and um, went new routes in uh, getting her film funded, and um, the results she'll tell you herself. Bea. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Thanks, Jakob, for in inviting me to talk here. By the way, all the beautiful little animations and keynotes and stuff is Jakob's work. So let's see what is gonna, still going to come with this nice little picture. So um, let me see how this works. So why I'm here, my film, Everything We Want, Alles, Was Wir Wollen, is about three women in their early 30s whom I follow in their individual search for the right way to live their lives. And they all, all of them also meet their mothers in the process. Obviously, I'm part of this generation where things are not that clear anymore. I would say most of us are. So, um, and somehow I felt alone with these questions and all these doubts about job, family, life, uh, children, etc. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. So, I felt this or how I feel and what's going on at the moment is not really presented in reality. And I was wondering if I really feel all alone or if there are not more people feeling the same way, and I think there are. So I really strongly felt I wanted to do this film. Um, so I'm going to show you the trailer now of the finished movie and then briefly inform you about this adventurous, exciting production process. So let's see if that works. Ich hatte mir auch früher immer gesagt, also wenn ich 30 werde, möchte ich das Kinderkriegen abgeschlossen haben. Die Welt ist so offen und was ihr mitkriegt an Reichtum in eurem Leben, das hat, glaube ich, noch keine Generation so mitgekriegt wie ihr. Ich finde das beneidenswert. Hartz IV sehr, sehr <lacht> Dieses plötzliche Gefühl, dass du von anderen irgendwie als erwachsener Mensch wahrgenommen wirst, das ist für mich irgendwie am schwersten. Zum Beispiel, wenn dich jetzt jemand irgendwo fragt, ja, und äh, arbeiten Sie, sind Sie verheiratet, haben Sie Kinder? Wo ich immer denke, was, ich bin doch noch zu jung für alles. <lacht> und ich glaube, man sagt ja auch immer so, mit 35 sollte man, er wird von einem erwartet, dass man irgendwas aufzuweisen hat, beruflich. Kann ich von mir sicher nicht behaupten. Das ist 
das, ne? Man sagt uns, dass es ein Mädchen ist, aber man, man weiß es nicht so genau. Ich weiß, es kommt wahrscheinlich irgendwas Schlechtes auf mich zu und ich weiß nicht, was es ist. Es äh, wurden äh, Veränderungen an den Zellen festgestellt. Es ist noch nicht Krebs, aber es kann so Krebs werden. Wenn man beruflich nirgends reinpasst, beziehungsmäßig nirgends reinpasst, auch sonst irgendwie so ins Gesellschaftsbild, also nicht definiert ist, dass man sagt so, hm, aber wer, wer bin ich dann, was bleibt dann übrig? Thank you. So, so I'm not going to talk too much with you guys about the film and the content, but more the production process. Um, briefly, the film, it premiered last year in April at Achtung Berlin. It was a great premiere. Then I distributed the film by myself and through that process, I find a distributor who did like a German theatrical release then in March this year, like right on Women's Day, which was great for that film. So, um, Let me see how this... Haha, <laughs> good. Um, so in contrary to a TV production where things have to be planned because of budget and everything in the beginning, with this movie things were not planned from the beginning at all. And um, so many things were, step, were taken step by step or when the problems hit we looked for a new solution. Um, so we dealt with all the problems and complications with not having money and stuff um, th um, through the production. Um, so the very first thing I had to do was, before the whole thing was to actually, I love this thing here, <laughs> to um, not to wait for the usual gatekeepers to finally like the project, because if you do that you can wait for one, two or three years. Um, I tried though, they didn't want to finance it, so I decided to walk the path alone and try different things without TV station and film funding. Um, today when I look back, like the last five years on this journey, were very exciting and many things happened which I would have never seen, like I would not have been able to see before. Amazing because it all started with um, Once I, um, hold on, it all started and changed once I spread my idea with many people using, for instance, crowdfunding, which like three, four years ago was kind of really new in Germany. And um, I was looking for other methods like crowdfunding. Um, so putting the project up in the World Wide Web was part of... Um, Was, was a big part, but the bigger part was actually meeting people, talking to them, make personal contact. It was very important. And also meeting the people at the right time, at the right place, with the right money. Um, so all the key people I met during the process who actually gave me money, who financed the project, who helped me with developing the idea were all, in the end of the day, people I met physical, physically. So... As we said, the first step is really to put your idea out there, although it might not be completely finished. And especially with a long-term movie like that, where I actually followed the woman for three years, like it's very hard to tell TV stations and stuff, ah yeah, in the end this and this is going to happen. Like this one will get pregnant, this will this one will get sick, this one will... So you can't. So I actually had to go out with an idea which... I by myself didn't know what's going to happen, what will happen. So that, there, this is courageous. So, um, and it's sometimes scary, but in the end, it's really worth it. So sharing your idea, um, especially with like-minded people in the beginning, and 
please don't share the idea with critical, very critical people in the beginning. Just share them with people who can, um, who share your vision, who see the opportunities, and then only later with the critical people, because otherwise they break you down before you even started in something. I have to follow up with these nice things here. <laughs> okay. So, um, so let me give you some examples which were during the process, beside crowdfunding, which worked really great, uh, what, what else happened? So, for example, so the movie was finished, and um, so we had the premiere in Berlin, and I still really needed money to finish the movie. That means making the DCP digital cinema package, the poster, the postcards, and everything to be able to have a premiere. So, and then I got scared, and I thought, shit, where do I get that money from? So I basically started to call around randomly. Just people, who can, do you know somebody who can help me, who can help me, who can help me? People who might have an interest in the film, people who, um, who, um, who, could, yeah, who could help me further. So step by step, I landed at the Senatsverwaltung for Women, Integration und Work, which is in Berlin. People who are not from here, like a, a Senat city kind of thing, who have money for these things. And they were straight away very fascinated with the topic. And like on the telephone, she said to me, okay, we're going to finance the last part. Um, and then I went there to introduce myself personal to these women who obviously were a, a big multiplicator who, who, would, who would like spread the news into their channels and they obviously are well connected. And they told me, now there's a nice German word, to, <laughs> to contact the Bundesgeschäftsstelle der Gleichstellungsbeauftragten which for the non-German speaking people is the Equal Opportunity Commissioner in the cities. I hope you know what that means. So I didn't know that something like that was existing and that they are that well connected. So what happened is I contacted the head of them and she was, obviously this topic of the movie fits so well in their uh, message, what they want to bring to the people. So she took it into their internal network and spread it, I think to, I'm not really sure how many, but I think it's over 800 uh, cities because every city over, I think 10,000 people has a Gleichstellungsbeauftragte. Um, I, I didn't really know what that means, but like one day I opened my email post box and like every five minutes an email was dropping in, can we please see your film, can we please see your suit, can we please invite you, and I'm like, what is going on? Um, and this is still happening today because they also uh, shared the, the theatrical release and up till today, the uh, Gleichstellungsbeauftragte, they call me, they cooperate with the cinemas in the city and then invite me and organize like special woman days and stuff. But additional to that, I must say, it's not necessarily only a woman film. Because many men I talk to say, we have exactly the same question, the same topics, it's just that I chose to focus on women. But um, I think you would agree it's not necessarily a, a woman film at all. So that was great. And that only came by, you know, really talking to the people, letting them know what's going on. And this was not able by just sending emails out and wait, waiting for any replies. Another thing which was great is um, I had the um, offer to talk at a conference in Seattle. But to actually finance that, I called the Goethe Institute in San Francisco and asked them if I can go to the conference. And then they were like, yeah, well, why don't you send us your film? So I sent them the film and two weeks later they called me back and said they really like the film so much they want to invite me to show the film. In the meanwhile, the conference was cancelled. But they said, no, but we're going to invite you anyways. So um, it, in the end of the day, ended up that in March I traveled the US for three weeks and the film was shown in Seattle. Was, so we organized another six, seven screenings. So it was, oh, hold on. 
So it was shown in Seattle, Victoria, San Francisco, and New York. So, but, wow, here's the thunderstorm now. So, but anyways, what I realized, if, if I would have never called them um, follow a path or ideas, like, I would have never ended up showing the film for three weeks in the US completely paid for. So, where are we now? So, I'm coming to an end. Um, so, but I must say, it, it is lots of work anyways. It's not that people come like, we give you 2,000 euros, show me your film there and there. So it is a lot of work. You have to always call the people back, make contact. But in the end of the day, it's really worth it, especially with this film. So the topic of this year's Republica is Into the Wild. And I really think like making this film was, for me, a big jump into the wild. Because... Um, Mm. It was really empowering, and, um, and I actually experienced myself I, that I don't actually have to wait for the gatekeepers, I can do it and still have a voice. And that was an amazing feeling, really empowering. And I think uh, someone who really knows a lot about um, how not only are you not alone in the world, but about... Uh, here, if you want to see more... <laughs> We Too have, late, just quickly, okay. we have a website, we have a Facebook website. Follow us and see what's happening there. Thanks a lot. And here's Uwe. Okay, so I only have a very few minutes left, so I'm going to do this without uh, slides. What I tried to bring to the table was I'm a drinks producer and uh, I've been doing this t since the last uh, 12 years. And I'm doing consensus democracy with nearly 1,000 stakeholders right now, so every stakeholder can veto every decision. And who of you thinks this is impossible to do? Well, I think so too. <laughs> and uh, this is a running company. We deliver to 200 cities in uh, three countries, so um, we've proven that it is possible, in fact. And uh, by doing so, we found several solutions which are quite uncommon to the usual business. For example, we we have no profits, we have no volume discounts, we have no advertising at all, not like other brands you might have seen here at the conference. And um, who of you needs advertising, by the way? Who of you likes advertising? Very few people. Some of you work there, okay. And um, we have one example I wanted to uh, present to you, which might sum up the way I'm trying to do business. We have a truck driver who has 30 years of experience, his name is Michael, and when he visits, like the wholesalers we deliver to, he kind of scans the, um, the area and the, the storage, and he kind of analyzes what products are stored there, how many of them, from which suppliers, and how do the trucks look like, and how do the, uh, thank you, how do the, um, what strategy this wholesaler might follow, and so on and so on, and then he calls me, and tells me about that, and he also announces like which wholesaler will be sold to which other wholesaler in like three months. And uh, this is, uh, it actually happens, so he's sharing with me lots of experience, lots of knowledge, which I otherwise wouldn't be uh, able to gather myself. And I think this is about building up trust between people, and this of course uh, takes a little while, so usually it's, it takes like two years for people working with us from like knowing we are the good guys to actually feeling it. And hope this is also not working, I don't know why. Um, and this is maybe the, the core idea I'd like to present uh, to you here. If you kind of treat people on eye level, and 99% of people will be good and will be sharing with you, and then things get possible which are impossible elsewhere. Thanks you. So, but what Uwe was uh, too humble to say is that uh, he's actually trying to change the world and um, that he's quite convincing actually to the people like Michael uh, when he talks to them that he actually manages to do so by uh, using a beverage to convince them of a new way to, uh, to do business. And I guess that's all the time we have today. Um, unless you have a couple of questions. 
Uh, one question. Um, actually, I'm going to put it put the question to you. So, um, if anybody feels that serendipity and then trusting each other is, is worth trying out, if you visit this website for the next three days, I'm going to gather um, email addresses there, and they won't be shared with anybody but the people who sign up to this email address. So, if you want to, you know be open to lady luck and not knowing who else in this room actually uh, is going to sign up. Who knows, perhaps you find someone uh, who can help you with something you didn't even know you were looking for. Thank you. <laughs>